as we get into earnings season um, and there's more going on, I tend to try to start the meeting earlier. Um, so I have a little bit more time for myself before the open, make sure I have all my scripts and everything ready and also make sure you have more time. Um, one thing I'll say, even though next week is really gonna be when things kick in, in terms of uh, busyness, um, we're already seeing more names this morning. Um, you know, I have, my job is not solely to pick stocks that I would only focus on and trade. Um, that hasn't been my job for a number of years. My job is to run a morning meeting where I'm picking stuff that I'm interested in trading that I think will also be good for less experienced traders and also more experienced traders. And so it's a combination. So just because I haven't talked about a stock that you think is good for you, doesn't mean it's not good for you. Um, for less experienced guys, I'd say that probably is the case. Um, but um, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot of things going on. And I am I'm factoring a lot of different things um, to do the morning meeting to make sure that it has the most value for the most people. Um, but certainly share in the chat any other stocks you're looking at and levels and things like that you should share um, because they might be good. All right. So, so the market um, filled the gap from March 22nd yesterday. Um, for about a week, we've been talking about the compression, the volatility, and that the odds were starting to improve for a move back to 270 to 272. We got that. And so really the only thing in terms of upside is what we talked about yesterday was coming into like maybe the end of the week if they wanted to do one final push to that um, basically where the, the down move started from on a, it was March 21st. Remember, I think it was a Fed meeting or something and it spiked, you can see the wick there. It got up to 273 or so. We sold off $2, the next day we gapped down and it went down $5, the next day we went down a few more. So that's, you know, that's within play. Um, it's highly unlikely it's going to get there today, uh, but maybe tomorrow or Friday, and we'll see. Like you know, 273 to 274 um, on Friday is a spot where I'd be looking for some sort of failure. Um, maybe we got a retest back to all right, from there, from 271, 272, something like that. Um, VIX is I think down at 15 now. Yeah, it's 1510. And so that, that's come in. I was kind of hoping it would like bottom out there at 15, but we'll see. Just from an intraday perspective, uh, volatility in the mid teens is good for traders. So, okay, so yesterday we topped out at 27080. This morning, pre-market 271.35. So I eh, have alerts down here, 270, 40, 270, 70. See if we come back inside of this range where we broke out right at the end of the day and failed. That would be the first spot where I'd look to see if buyers step in. Um, with the compressed volatility, you can have more confidence now. You know, come in 80 cents to a dollar from the pre-market high. That's a spot where you'd think people would be looking to buy. Um, IWM coming into 158, it looks like. That's the spot. You can see when we came off from 160, we popped back up here to 158 and change. Came off down to 154, whatever that is there. And back up to 158. So it's 158, 10, 158, 20. Um, we're right there. Um, so that's the equivalent of uh, on the on the spy of like failing it from that that 273 area. So um, certainly want to look at that as a possible failure if we get up there today. And again, uh, I just want to say something about. So when I'm talking about areas where the market could fail from and have pull-ins, it's very different than after we have like a big down move like this and we're looking for bounces for failure areas. When we look for failure areas after the sellers start to take control, we look for large downside moves. Um, for failure areas when the buyers are in control, we're just looking for you know fairly benign, reasonable pullbacks. Um, so just an important point, especially for the less experienced traders. So let's get started. So I got four names for you. Um, what we've been seeing, and we didn't talk about gold 
Goldman Sachs yesterday. I almost said Golden State. <laughs> we didn't talk about Goldman Sachs yesterday, which I think sold off on good numbers. Um, one of the points being made online, which I saw, which is a good one, is traditional investment banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have always gotten a lot of revenue from the trading side. And trading just doesn't deserve a high multiple and doesn't get a high multiple. And so when you look at Morgan Stanley's numbers, same thing. They had a solid beat, but the majority of it was from their trading income. You know, it was it was 54 and a half earlier when I was here in the market. I, I held off on shorting it. it was thought it maybe on the open and they'd be dumb enough to pop it up into this area here where it's failed a bunch of times in the last two weeks. They're on the conference call right now, and it's it's ticked back down to 54. But if we go and we look at, you know, how these financials, and also Bank of America as well, got got clobbered from that 115 down to 110. Um, it seems like it's likely that this thing's going to sell off. What do I have for first support? 53.85. All right, so we're already there. So below this, so I thought failure here, come into here, something gets below that, and then it's, you know, D270 to 53. So this is the kind of the first support right here. And then if we look at the bigger consolidation over the last couple of weeks, it takes it all the way down to 52. So you have a couple of spots to look for for downside targets on a short. And you can see over the last half hour, it's come off from about 54 and a half. Um, hopefully we'll get a, a move back right here on the open and then move down to here. TXT. Right. So we don't have any. So in this case, we don't have a lot. Since it's traded 140,000 shares, let's go to the daily. So you can see that you see the notes there. I put crushed EPS, no change in, in guidance. I think people are just viewing that as them being conservative. Um, also, the large buyback, based on the number of shares they said they're going to buy back, um, it's definitely going to be over 10%. I mean, unless the stock goes to 70. Um, and they sold a unit for 800 million bucks, which they can use that to help fund the buyback as well. So let's do our test to see where it is. Let's see where it was in January. It was at 60. I'm sorry, 50. 56. So it's about 20% above there now. What's the data? It's a little bit higher. 64. Let's eat. Geez, my math is bad. Um, 56, $8, so is that 15%? So it's about 15% here. If we go back to October, 52, 12. What I'm calculating right now is how much it's gone up in the last six months. That's always, when somebody crushes, that's the one thing, that's the thing you got to be concerned about. Yeah, it's just, it's just in a very reasonable uptrend, um, a two-year uptrend in the channel. You can see the top of the channel really is where it's gapping in the pre-market. So this is a good candidate. Um, if it gets sell pressure right on the open to come into the prior high, see if buyers step in here. But it's not a stock that I trade often. I've traded a few times over the years. Um, definitely buyers stepping in here at 63. I mean, ideally, you'd get a drop out into here, um, closer to this area here, at least 62. That would you put you in a position if they take out the pre-market high, then you know you're looking at three plus dollars of upside. Normally, it has a dollar and a quarter range ETR. Um, so, yeah, two to three dollars would be normal range post earnings, um, unless it just catches a bit and then accumulated all day, closes at the high, maybe the range would be a little bit bigger. Um, but let's look for that dropout right in the open. No different than Netflix had the quick five, six dollar dropout on the open. Um, and then by 10.30, 10.45, took out the pre-market high and then trended. So same type of scenario that here. Um, so what would get me to change my view on that? Uh, hard dropout on the open and then a failure, something like a failure right there. I'm going to take out of the uh, initial down move. But even then, I would I would expect buyers to step back in at 60 into, into this right here. It could be a very good one today. Normally trades one and a half million shares. 
Um, it could do double that, three to four million shares. We're on the conference call right now. Seems to be going okay. Still up here at 64. Uh, LRCX. So this is going to be a tougher stock, um, wider spread, but I just think it's worth it. I could have a 10 to $15 range today. So longer term, it was in this uptrend. And then as the uptrend accelerated here, it had a hard pullback, never came back to the longer term uptrend. I guess you could say this was the, this was the medium term uptrend right here, um, from here. Came into this, went up and broke that, came into the long term. This was probably the February low, yeah. So it came into the longer term uptrend on the February low, um, made a new high, probably at the same time as MU made a new high. Um, and then since then, this is one, one of the ones I was considering when I was buying Boeing and um, Adobe buying into this pullback. Um, just didn't have a clear, kind of wanted it here. In the mid 180s, never quite got there. Um, and so it's gapping down right now. I actually tried to short it at 205 in the pre-market. I didn't get it. It was as low. Well, let's zoom in and take a look. See, I was like up here and then people, other people had the same idea. They were like, they wanted to short it into this. People stepped in front and immediately like dropped a dollar and I couldn't get it. My idea was just to, to short it for a move back down to like this area here. So when I'm curious, if I was around in the after hours buying it into, what did I put on the sheet? Yeah, 197 is a really good level. Um, it did get through there like very briefly in the after hours. We're coming in long today for a little bit from here. Um, I just don't know if it's going to get there again, but let's 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 assume it's going to at least touch 200. Let's see. Let's use 200 as a guide right on the open. Um, if it comes into it and it's bought the way that it was in the pre-market, um, maybe you look for a pop right back up to this 204.50, 205, where it failed in the pre-market. And then the thing is, when you buy it, like people who bought it down here, they're in a total position of strength now. But it's po it's very possible. This actually could be a lot of trouble in here. Prior few days coming into earnings, this this range here is I think will be tough. But it's very possible if you're in from here and it ends up consolidating at 204 and breaks to the upside, you could catch a ten dollar move in it all the way back up to 208, 209. And 208 I have as the top resistance on our sheet. Yesterday's support. So I'm prepared for anything on this one. A bunch of analysts came out and defended it. What I put there. There's a very, very slight drop in margins from 46.5% to 46%. It seems like what the shorts were hanging their hat on, why they pushed it down in the after hours, was there was a slight down, there wasn't as strong growth um, in order quarter over quarter, year over year, as people maybe thought would be good for the momentum. Um, but they're still, I think they kept their guides and they're gonna do like $14 a share. I'm sorry, per so the numbers were so ridiculous how much money they're making. Um, and I think people are thinking once this 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 digests here, this is going to be like a 280 to $300 stock pretty quickly. So that's the bigger picture perspective. Obviously, for most of us, we got to be, be focused on what does it do here versus 198 to 200? And what does it do 204, 205? And we'll go from there. Um, you're probably going to need to risk at least a dollar on this one from an entry, a decent entry. Um, and then IBM, I tried to play it for a bounce, um, 53, 52 in the after hours. Didn't really bounce. This morning it was a little bit higher. You now it's failed. Um, you know, looking at the daily or the higher time frame chart, I do think there's a pretty decent chance. I know it's having trouble holding above this 152. So maybe, what do I have for the next? I really do think if it like flushes down on the open and then gets back above 52, very easily could go to here or even 56. Right now, sellers are definitely in control. Obviously, it's a very ugly and messy chart on the daily. When the market sold off in the beginning of February, it went from 64 down to 44 that morning where we bounced. 
Um, since then, it made the higher low with the market at 48. So, you know, a flush, a flush into this area, into 50 on the open, maybe. Getting to 48 again, I just don't see it from the, that report. Um, but anything is possible. Um, that certainly wouldn't be my inclination that it would get there. It's more like this area here, and then kind of best case here. Netflix. So Netflix pretty much aligned with what we talked about in the morning meeting in terms of how these there's very few momentum memes left. You know, it's this, it's Amazon, Tesla. Um, when they have really good numbers and good guidance on the open, you get the, the hard down red bar um, to after hour support. And if you get a hold higher and a hold higher, then you get just get ready for the break of resistance at the 330. Look like a bunch of people did that. I was off the desk when this break happened in the consolidation, but I saw at least four or five people make money in it. So good job there. Hopefully some people in the chat caught this as well. But basically once it gets above the morning high and then you get your consolidation above the morning high, this is where you're looking, you know, to be long with a stop down here. And you know, you look to make three to five dollars because you're risking a dollar in it. Um, and you got that. You got a you got five dollars where it failed here a few times at 338. Um, coming into today, so buyers in control, but it's always in the back of my mind that it was up 60 percent coming into earnings. So it's possible that if this thing peters out and and gets back down below 330, it could lead to a larger move to the downside. But right now, buyers in control. Um, I put this area here as the spot to look at this morning as a long. And then we'll see if it can test yesterday's resistance. And there's no resistance above that, obviously. It's all time high. Um, and then I wanted to put Tesla on. I didn't talk about it yesterday. Um, they had a planned shutdown of their factories. Um, and so that was the, that's what caused the, the downtick right on the open. You can see it bounced um, about $10. Um, after that, they then came out, I saw last night, to say after the planned shutdown and improving the automation in the line, um, they actually bumped up their target. The end of to Q2 at the end of June, they talked about a goal of 5,000 models per week. Um, they said with this shutdown and automation that the upside target now is 6,000 vehicles per week. So that, that caught my attention. Um, it's a pretty good catalyst, I think. Right on the open, if they flush it down closer to 290, I think I already have a script in to buy it. And then I'd be looking to play it back up to 296. And I would actually hold a little bit. Um, see if it works its way back towards the upper part of this consolidation. That's my trade on that one. Um, all right, so good, only five after nine. We've got plenty of time to get ready for the open. As always, be patient and good luck. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20-year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.